Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Solution here and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 4 from the May 2012 PUA paper 2. If you want to check out these solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so we have a partnership question and it says P and G are two sole traders who decided to trade under the partnership name of PG Enterprises. The following are lists of balances for each trader before the formation of the partnership. So we have a little table here with items for P. We have equipment, payables, inventory, receivables, cash, loose tools, and bank overdraft. And across here, we have a similar table for G, motor vehicles, stationery, premises, cash, mortgage. Okay. First thing we are required to do is prepare individual opening entries as at 1st May 2012 to record each sole trader's contribution to the partnership 7 marks. Okay, so as you should know, when entering items in the general journal, we put debit entries first, followed by credit entries, and the credit entries are indented relative to the debit entries. Now, I didn't put a date column, nor did I put a folio column. In the case of the folio column, they haven't given us information to populate that column, so I don't usually put it. If you want to include it and populate it, be my guest. Okay, so we'll deal with P's information first. So the debit items would be the assets because assets have debit balances. So we have equipment, inventory, receivables, cash, and loose tools. There's no particular order. You have to put them in making journal entries. I'm just putting them in order of appearance. So we have equipment, inventory, receivables, cash, and loose tools. Next, we have liabilities. So that's the payables item here and the bank overdraft. Now, if you take a look and see when we populate them here, so payables and overdraft, and notice again, they are credit items and they are indented. We're missing the capital figure. Because remember, on top of that, the sum of these debit entries is definitely going to be greater than the sum of these credit entries here. And we need a credit to balance it off. And that has to be capital. So when you add up your debit entries here, and you add up your credit items here, and you subtract, you're going to get the capital balance for P, right? And it says to record P's contribution and opening capital. Okay, let's take a look at G's item, shall we? Okay, so this is G's table here. So we have assets again, motor vehicles, stationary, premises, cash, and one liability of mortgage. And just like we saw for P, we're going to add up all of the assets and subtract the one liability in this case. So across here, we're seeing motor vehicle, stationary, premises, cash, and mortgage. And then we're going to add up these things here and subtract the 34, and that's going to give us 36,000. Of course, we need a narration to basically briefly describe what's happening here. So it says to record G's contribution and opening capital. Now, of course, that narration is not set in stone. If you could think of a better, more descriptive one that's more applicable, please feel free to leave it in the comment section below, and we can help each other get better at accounts. Okay, let's take a look at the next part of the question. Alrighty, so it says, prepare a classified, summarized balance sheet for PG Enterprises as at 1st May 2012 using the order of permanence 7 marks. Okay, so a classified balance sheet, or as we know it now, a statement of financial position. So of course, please remember to properly head up all your statements, name of the entity, name of the statement, and the period to which it applies. So permanence means long lasting. So we're going to start with the non-current assets first, then hit current assets. And then, of course, there are different ways to do a balance sheet. I'm going to show you two presentations. I'm going to talk you through the net assets presentation, which is the one I kind of prefer, which is assets minus liabilities equal to capital. And then I'm going to show you the long-term, well, the financing uh, or assets equal to capital plus liabilities version. Okay, so I'm going to show you two different balance sheets, but they're going to be communicating the same information. So for non-current assets, we are going to start with the premises of 60,000 brought in by G. Then we have equipment and motor vehicle, bringing up the final item there, for a subtotal of 82,000. Next, current assets, we are going to have inventory. And we had two sets of, sorry, no, we just had inventory from P, my bad. Then we had receivables, loose tools, we had stationery, and we had cash. That's going to give us a subtotal of 29.8. And if we add that to the non-current assets, we're going to have total assets of 111,800. And of course, like I said, it's the net asset presentation. So we're going to do assets minus liabilities. So we're going to start with the non-current liabilities, which was just the mortgage from, I think, G. Then we have the current liabilities, which will include the payables. 
and the bank overdraft from P. So that's going to give us a subtotal of 11,800. When added to the 34,000, will give us a 45,008. And you're going to subtract that total liabilities figure from your total assets figure to get net assets of 66,000. Now, net assets has to be financed by something, and it's usually financed by capital. The capital for P was 30,000. The capital for C, sorry, for G was 36,000. And when you add 30 and 36, you get 66. And as you could see here, the net assets, which is assets minus liabilities, is equal to capital. Okay, so as promised, I'm going to show you an alternative presentation, which is assets on top minus liabilities below. Okay, so your headings stay the same. So we have non-current assets. So I'm just going to populate things very quickly here. All right, so we're seeing the same exact information as we saw in the previous version of this. And we have total assets. So we're totaling it there. And now we're going to say finance by capital and liabilities. So we're going to show the two capital balances for P and G and the total. And then we're going to tackle the non-current liabilities, which is just the mortgage. And then the current liabilities, which are payables and bank overdraft, giving us total liabilities of 45,008. Now we're going to add that to the 66,000 above and we're going to get 111,800, which is how we pay for or finance the assets. So you see in total assets saying 111,800 there as well. Okay, so I think we have this a uh, couple more quick things to do. Okay, so part B says the two partners anticipate a profit of 99,000 at the end of the first year's trading, but have not yet decided what profit sharing ratio to adopt. Hmm. Calculate each partner's share of profit under the following scheme. So we have in the capital sharing ratio and in the ratio 3 to 7. Okay, so the capital sharing ratio means in the ratio of the balances of their capital accounts. So we know that their capitals total 66 as we just saw that in the balance sheets with P contributing 30 and G contributing 36,000. So we're going to take each of those individual capital balances put them each individually over the total of 66 and then multiply that by 99. So net profit to be shared 99,000, we're going to share the profit. So P will get 30 over 66 by 99, which gives 45, and G will get the remainder, 36 over 66 by 99, which is 54. And 45 plus 54 is 99,000. Now let's take a look at where they said they're going to share it in the ratio 3 to 7. So the net profit didn't change. And to share the profit, we're going to add the 3 and the 7 to get 10. The 3 applies to P, so P gets 3 tenths, 3 over the 10. And that turns out to be 29,007. And G gets the remainder, 7 tenths, which turns out to be 69,300. And when you total those two items, you get 99,000. Okay, just one small thing left again, and we've done this question. Okay, so part C says, list two features other than the profit sharing ratio that should be included in P&G's partnership agreement. Now, that list is a very long list. So other features in the, now, I'm not going to give you all of the possible items. I'm just going to give you a few, right? But I'm going to give you more than two. So just think of your appropriation account. We could have interest on capital, salary, interest on drawings. What else? Limits on drawings, definitely. Procedures for dissolution. So that's if the partnership is closing down. What do we do? Because we have to figure out a way to pay back creditors and to repay the partners if there's any capital left to pay them with. Okay, procedures for admission of a partner. So if a new partner comes in, how do we deal with that? Now, if you go up to form six and do CAPE accounting unit one, you're going to see more of that there. Procedures for departure of a partner. You'll also see that in CAPE accounting as well. And amount and timing of partners fixed capital commitment. So do the partners have to bring in more capital? If so, when? All right. Okay, guys. So that's about it for this question. Okay, guys. So there you have it. That's the solution for question four from the May 2012 POE paper two. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave it in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I can. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you'll find some pretty useful POA handles. Anyway, guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.